This time on Bonafide Bus, we cover the bulk of our build. We install solar panels along with a roof deck up top. We cover our entire electrical system, plumbing, and so much more. I'm Sarah, and this is Eric. We love traveling and enjoying the great things that Earth has to offer. So a few months ago, we decided to pursue life on the road and capture our adventures along the way. Subscribe for a new video every other Wednesday, and thanks for coming with us. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bonafide Bus. Everything you're about to see today was filmed over about a two month period. And when Eric and I first started this process, we had very limited carpentry, plumbing, and electrical skills. We learned a lot. Um, this is not an informative instructional video, but if you are doing a school conversion or a van and you like how we did any of the things that you see, please feel free to reach out, comment, or message us, and we will be happy to help you in any way we can. All right, let's get into it. So we are patching up all the little holes today with pennies and metal adhesive, and then we are going to just make sure that the whole floor is nice and clean and tidy, sweep it out, and then we're going to cover it with Rust-Oleum. Mixing up our high-performance enamel. It's gonna protect the metal on the bottom from rust. And wow, I'm making a huge mess. Shocker. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> All right, let's paint. Let's paint. applied two coats of the protective enamel onto the floor as well as a silicone sealant around the edges and once that was all dry we were ready to build our floating subfloor. Today's a beautiful wonderful day because we are putting stuff inside the bus, we're framing and insulating the floor so we made our way to the stow with two long lists and we're gonna go get everything we need. And then we'll probably end up back here. Come later. <laughs> Ready? Insulation and then throw on the top plywood, and there's our base. <laughs> and goes the insulation. When everything was stripped out of the bus, the height from the floor to the ceiling was roughly six and a half feet. So Eric and I, being not particularly tall people, took advantage of the height and decided to insulate the floor. So in that subfloor, we put in insulation with an R value of 7.5. Yesterday, we finally got our framing in the bus and all of our insulation. Uh, we started taping everything with aluminum um, tape just for all the little cracks and crevices. So we'll finish taping everything up today and then we get to put the plywood down for our floor. Couldn't be more perfect. We're finally done with the floor for today. 
No, we're not. You still gotta screw it all down. <laughs> Except Eric's putting screws in. Yeah, I gotta only do the screws. Really happy to have this finally done. This feels and looks like real progress. Finally yes. feels like progress. <laughs> Look at that. All right, last screw in the flooring. Peace flooring. Yay! We officially have floor. How do you feel, Eric? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Our original plan was to insulate the floor, the walls, and the ceiling all at the same time. However, we soon realized that we had to install everything on the roof before we could insulate it. So that meant bolting in the solar panels, installing the roof fan, and bolting in the base for our roof deck. Solar day. Solar day. Okay, so today is day one of solar. We went with the Renogy solar kit, 400 watt, and we are now making the frame stronger by adding some steel around them. So we're gonna go through the panel, through the steel, and then into the bus. So we just cut these all to spec and drill in some holes. Bada right bing. Now. And yeah, hopefully they won't fly off into the middle of the road or <laughs> yeah. into the car. This is our way to go about it, so. Hopefully it works. Yeah. I'm very pleased with how these turned out. My very own Bob the Builder. Building our solar system was by far the biggest hurdle in our build. Going into it, Eric and I had zero experience with solar panels, electrical, or wiring. It was so stressful, but the fact that now we can go off-grid harvest energy from the sun, and live in our bus is the most accomplished feeling, and I'm really, really happy that we did it. Eric's almost done hooking up the connections to the isolator, to the bus battery underneath. You can see our little, our little chart. The only things we have left to do are to basically hook the battery terminals up, negative to negative, positive to positive, um, put those onto our bus bar, and then connect our solar panel wires, which are connected to the panels on the roof, to the charge controller right here, which is where we'll get all of our power from, and then test out all of our little fuses one by one to the appliances that are hooked up. So hopefully soon we'll have power. I guess we'll just find out. This one is the negative one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's get this in. Okay. Um, oh, my oh. oh my god. Yes. You <laughs> did it. I think. All right, time to test some stuff. I think we start with a fan. Okay. Go big or go home. The fan fuses in. Let's see if it works. Oh my god. So nervous. Please. Ready? Please, please, 
getting pumped. Babe, I can't believe we did it. I mean, I can't believe we did it, but wow, that took so long. Looking back, we're so happy that we installed our solar system ourselves because now we gained all these electrical skills and if anything does go wrong or we want to put in another appliance, we know how. We were so relieved to finish solar. It was a huge step forward for us in our build and when we were finished, we decided to go on a drive to make sure that there was no excessive shaking or anything on the roof with the panels and just ensure that they weren't going to go flying off later. <laughs> so the bus has sat for about a month, a month and a half, and we needed to take it on a drive. So we drove it around and decided to baptize it <laughs> <laughs> in our favorite lake. So we're going to go for a little swim and then, uh, drive it around more and yeah. A couple of days ago, Richie and I decided we wanted a deck on top of the bus. So today we're going to build a deck. Time to get to work. Before this started recording, Sarah told me to be myself. <laughs> I don't know when I'm not myself. So, sorry if I've been lying to you guys. And the caulking queen up here. It looks like melted marshmallows. Yay. We built our deck base. Yep. Look at that. Things bolted in. First roof drink ever! On the deck, first beer. First beer on the deck, baby! This looks so good. This looks really, really good. It looks really good. I'm very pleased. Next, it was time to insulate the walls and the ceiling. We tossed around ideas of doing spray foam insulation, but based on where we were with our budget and considering COVID, we decided to do fiberglass insulation ourselves. We knew we were going to be in cold climates, so we decided to go with a hefty R value of 19. Before we could put up the back wall and the ceiling, we had to repair a puncture in the back corner of the bus from the previous owner. So we used a fiberglass bondo kit on the inside and the outside of the bus, and we were really happy with how it turned out. Next, it was time to install the ceiling. I really wanted a white shiplap to make the space just appear taller and longer. So Eric's dad came over to lend a much needed helping hand and we threw the shiplap up with our LED lights, our insulation, and the bus really started to take shape. Another late night working on the bus. And we have some extra lights to work under now. Now we can stay up even later and work on the bus. Sarah's really happy about that. Then we were on to plumbing. So again, we didn't have any plumbing experience, so we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. We did know that we wanted a large water tank. We ended up going with a 55 gallon so that we could be off grid for an extended amount of time. We're all plumbed up. We got our shower in. Shower heads outside. And then we ran this one underneath. Comes here and it's gonna go to our sink over here, but we're just draining it out the side here to test. So testing our water. One thing that we didn't install was a hot water heater. And so far, there have been a few nights when we definitely have been missing it, but for the most part, we've been managing very well without one. We've got a water flowing. Some updates on our build. Yesterday, we found this amazing co-pilot seat. Um, it folds all the way down and it moves frontwards and backwards. 
just needs to be bolted to the undercarriage. Um, the shower's in, the closet's in, we have cabinets. Um, we started the bed. We will finish that bed today, we will finish it. And we just acquired this massive piece of live edge wood um, from our good friends, the Nappers. Rico and Daisy, thank you so much for that piece. It's gonna look amazing in our build. I'm in love with it. We are definitely past 50% of what we need to do to get this thing on the road. Um, and the closer we get, just like the faster and faster it feels like everything is finally coming together. So I can't wait to get started today and get this thing on the road. We have been keeping track of every single time that we go to the store with this list. So right now we are at 72 trips to the store. We took a bet before making this list and I bet that we would have 95 trips to the store. Eric bet 142. So um, at this rate, it looks like he's gonna win. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff we deal with on a daily basis. <laughs> Show him, okay, latch it. Now leave it. <laughs> <laughs> we are not builders. How we though? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Ooh, she's about to get the axe. We're so nervous. It's 8 p.m. and we've been working since 8 a.m. But Eric's gonna go ahead and cut our beautiful butcher block, anyways. Are you confident? Come on, get confident. I'm always confident. Okay. We're good. We'll see how it goes. I should have drawn the, the line. line on the bottom though. Instead of the top. That's what happens when we're tired. <laughs> no thanks. Ready? Yes. <sighs> that looks amazing. Good job, babe. Wow. That's actually really nice. We wanted our desk and our countertop to be made of the same material, so we picked up two butcher blocks from Menards. Our butcher blocks came unfinished, so we cut them to spec. We made the holes for our sink and our stove top, and then sanded them down and finished them off with a few coats of polyurethane. All right, it's another wonderful day to work on the bus. I just sealed our countertop and our desk with polyurethane and now I am on to staining this gorgeous piece of live edge wood. I sanded this thing once, twice, three times and then a fourth, completely cleaned it up. Eric and I chose this kind of orangey hue and I tested it at the bottom. Um, I really like the color and how it's turning out. I think that the edges went really well. And now it's time to move on to the center. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. I'm really excited to see you next time because we will be taking you through our official, final, finished bus tour. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next time. You can walk up there if you want. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm jumping this bus. Uh huh. Where's you going? We're gonna we're gonna go wherever we want in it. You wanna go inside? Mm -hmm. Hi, Kaipi. I'm Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. You, you're a good driver, buddy. Cheese. Look at you. Cheese. Cheese.